I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system. And I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. As always, let's start with the CPU performance first. On a Ryzen 5 3600X, using CPU limited settings in a CPU heavy area. I am glad to say that the CPU is only becoming a small bottleneck at around the 80 FPS range, with the CPU being well utilized, reaching a total of around 70% utilization. This is great to see after so many recent poorly optimized games that fail to fully take advantage of the CPU. This is a title where a smooth 60 FPS experience is possible on more lower end CPUs. As for the stuttering, during my time with the game, I haven't seen any so far. It definitely feels like a more polished port than the original Horizon Zero Dawn. Now let's get into the settings, starting with anti-aliasing and upscaling methods. SMAA still suffers from heavy shimmering. TAA is what you'd expect TAA to look like. XESS quality suffers from some ghosting, while FSR3 quality suffers from even more egregious ghosting. DLSS quality looks the best and the most stable. As for performance, something weird is going on. XESS and FSR3 have way lower FPS than they should, no matter what quality option is used, while DLSS performs as it should. As for the motion test, XESS quality looks to not have any noticeable issues, while FSR3 quality suffers from some sharp trailing issues, and the trailing on DLSS quality is almost unnoticeable. The texture quality setting noticeably increases texture resolution with each option and increases VRAM usage by around 1 GB with each option as well. Texture filtering has a noticeable improvement with each option. Keep it on 16x. Shadows can be disabled entirely, but barely increase performance. In this scene, going from very low to low has a small improvement. Medium looks the same here, while High and Ultra start to improve shadow filtering. In this scene, going from very low to low increases shadow distance greatly, and medium looks the same here as well, while high and ultra look to have much more accurate shading, especially noticeable on foliage. I don't recommend using anything below low, and going above medium starts to decrease FPS a lot. Use medium for the best balance. The ambient occlusion setting only offers SSAO as an option, and thankfully, it has a very small performance impact. I would have liked to see more options here, but I guess SSAO is just fine. Keep it on as it is necessary for the best image quality.
screen space reflections look blurry even on the highest option, and the performance cost is very small. Keep it on high. The level of detail setting does as is expected from it, with each option gradually increasing the LODs and gradually decreasing FPS as well. Even at the highest option, I could still notice some popping while playing. Speaking of popping, it's very noticeable on very low and low, while on medium and above, it starts to become less apparent, although it's still visible if you're looking for it. I recommend medium for the best balance. The hair quality setting only affects alloy with incremental improvements with each option, and the performance cost is minimal, so just keep it on high. The terrain quality improves the distant terrain with each option, and its performance impact is very small. Keep it on very high. The clouds quality setting on low and medium look the same to me, while high adds volumetric rolling clouds. As far as I can tell, it doesn't actually affect cloud quality, but just adds more clouds, and they do look really nice. Keep it on high as it is vital for the image quality. The translucency quality setting on high res increases the resolution of some objects like particles, and the difference is night and day. It doesn't seem to have a performance impact, so use high res. I tested many scenes with the parallax occlusion mapping setting, and I couldn't see any difference in image quality or performance. It's either broken, or I just couldn't find what it affected. If you know what it affects, Tell us in the comments. Depth of field is used heavily in this game, from cutscenes to lots of different uses in gameplay. Medium and high look the same with that old gen quality look to it, while very high greatly improves its quality, and thankfully, it has a very small performance impact. The motion blur setting adds camera and per object motion blur that you guys know I like, and you can choose its strength as well. It looks really nice in my opinion, and it doesn't seem to affect performance. Use it if you like motion blur. The screen space shadow setting adds subtle yet highly needed shading to some parts of the environment. It has a minor FPS cost, keep it on for the best image quality. It looks like the game is not scalable with the standard settings, as the optimized settings perform similarly to the max settings only giving us a few more frames. It's only when using DLSS quality does the performance actually start to increase substantially, and it appears that the remastered version of Horizon Zero Dawn is incredibly more GPU demanding than the standard version, to the point where it almost performs the same as Horizon Forbidden West. 
a game that looks at least two times as good as this one. Not to forget that the other upscaling methods are plain broken. Performance wise, people that can't use DLSS are basically stuck using TAA as their last viable choice. This game could have used a few more graphic settings, like more ambient occlusion options, higher resolution screen space reflections, and options that actually affect standard cloud quality. But looking at the bright side, the game seems to not have stuttering issues like its predecessor, so it's quite smooth in that regard. What do you think?